Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a quartic equation. I'll be presenting two methods, and let's start with the first one. So we have x to the fourth power minus 8x plus 63 equals 0. Notice that I don't have x cubed term, and I don't have an x squared term. So some of the terms are missing, which is actually a good thing, especially uh, for the first method. So for my first method, I'm going to do the following, and I used this method before. x to the fourth minus 8x plus 63, I'm going to write it as a product of two quadratics. And those quadratics are going to look like this. One of them is going to be x squared plus ax plus b, and the other one is going to be x, x squared minus ax plus c. Now why did I use plus ax and minus ax? Because I want x cubed to cancel out, and if I choose opposite terms, then x cubed does actually cancel out. Because the only way to get x cubed is by multiplying x squared by x. In this case, they cancel out. Great, so that's a nice strategy. If you didn't see that, you can use different variables, but then eventually you're going to realize that the sum of those two variables is 0. Okay, great. Let's go ahead and distribute the right-hand side and set it equal to the left-hand side. So we get x to the fourth power minus ax cubed plus cx squared plus ax cubed minus a squared x squared plus acx plus bx squared minus abx. Wow, that's a lot of terms. Plus bc is equal to zero. But I want to set it equal to the left-hand side, which is x to the fourth minus 8x plus 63. Now, in this case, I want to simplify this a little bit, so let's go ahead and rearrange. x to the fourth plus, I'm going to put together the coefficients uh, of x cubed and x squared, but x cubed cancels out. We already talked about it, right? These two cancel out. Uh, leaving us with the following. c plus b minus a squared all multiplied by x squared. And then the coefficient of x is ac minus ab. And the constant term is bc. And this should equal the right-hand side. By setting them equal to each other uh, as polynomials, we notice that the coefficient of x squared needs to be 0 because there is no x squared here. And then the coefficient of x needs to be negative 8 because that's what it is on the right-hand side. And bc is a constant term, and that needs to equal 63. So let's go ahead and set up a system of equations, and we're going to solve for it. We have three variables and three equations, so we should be good to go. So here's what I get from the first equation. I mean, from the, uh, the coefficient of x squared, in other words. c plus b equals a squared. Awesome. What about the other ones? I get ac minus ab is equal to negative 8. I can take out an a and write this as c minus b equals negative 8. My goal is to isolate c minus b. So let's go ahead and write it as negative 8 over a. Why am I trying to isolate a? Or I should say, why am I trying to isolate c minus b instead of a? Because I have c plus b in the other equation, and I can basically use elimination. I can eliminate b very easily and write c in terms of a, which is nice. Let's go ahead and do it. Adding these up, b cancels out. We get 2c, or not 2c. I hope you see what I see. I know some people don't like this, but I keep making it because some people like it anyways. So I, I'm not overdoing it. So this is 2c. Let's go ahead and make a common denominator and then divide both sides by 2 or multiply by 1 half, which gives us c equals a cubed minus 8 over 2a. So that's the value of c. And if you, instead of adding, if you subtract these two equations, you get rid of c and end up with b, which becomes the same thing but with a plus sign. So this is going to be the b value. All right? So we got the b and the c, and now it's time to use the third one, which is bc equals 63. Since I have b and c in terms of a, bc equals 63 is going to help out a lot. Now, b is a cubed plus 8 over 2a, and c is a cubed minus 8 over 2a. 
this equals 63. Notice that a cubed plus 8 and a cubed minus 8 are conjugates. Therefore, the product is going to be a difference of two squares, which is a to the 6th power minus 64. And the bottom is going to be 4a squared, and the whole thing equals 63. Awesome. Now, from here, we're going to get a hexic equation, but we're going to turn it into a cubic. So let's go ahead and distribute a to the 6 minus 64 is equal to 252a squared, which is 63 times 4, by the way. And we can put everything on the same side. a to the 6 minus 252a squared minus 64 is equal to 0. How about, uh-oh, that's like a weird thing. And now I can go ahead and call a squared. Let's set it equal to, I don't know, how about t? Okay. We get t cubed minus 252t minus 64 is equal to two, 0. Now, from here, I'm just going to give you the solution for simplicity's sake, but you can definitely solve this use either using, using the cubic formula or some other method. Obviously, rational root theorem is going to give you the answer. But notice that t needs to be positive. So t equals 16 is our rational solution, and that equals a squared. This gives us two options, either uh, a equals 4 or a equals negative 4. But you got to remember, a, b is equal to, what? wait, a don't, I don't have a value for a, b. But yeah, c can be written as a cubed minus 8 over 2a. So from here, I can find the values of b and c. If a is equal to 4, b becomes 9 and c becomes 7. If a is equal to negative 4, b becomes negative 7 and c becomes negative 9. Guess what? These two give us the same result. So we don't have to worry about it. We can just go ahead and write our equation as x squared plus 4x plus 9 multiply by x squared minus 4x plus 7 equals 0. And from here, you just solve the quadratics and you get the following solutions. 2 plus minus square root of 3i and x equals negative 2 plus minus square root of 5. If you don't like uh, writing x, you can write x1, x sub 2, x sub 3, so on and so forth. And this brings us to the second method. Not to the end of the video yet, but a couple more minutes and now I'll be done. Because second method is quick. So for my second method, I'm going to do the following. I'm going to do a little bit of hocus pocus here. Obviously, this is very hard to see. But if you try this, you'll notice that it works for some cortex. So, especially those who miss some terms. So I'm going to write this as x to the 4th power plus 16x squared plus 64. Now, you might be questioning why I do this. First of all, I want to get a perfect square minus another perfect square. But in order to do that, I want to add an appropriate term and also obtain a, a negative 8x at the end. Uh, again, this is not very easy to see, but you can do it after some practice. So I'm going to subtract 16x squared because there's no x squared in the original equation. And I also need to subtract 8, negative, uh, just subtract 8x because I have a negative 8x. And of course, to get 63, I need to subtract 1. And guess what? Both of these become perfect squares. Let's go ahead and write the result. The first one becomes x squared plus 8 quantity squared. And the second one just becomes 4x plus 1 quantity squared. And this is difference of two squares. Isn't that awesome? We can go ahead and factor it. x squared plus 8 plus 4x plus 1. That is multiplied by x squared plus 8 minus 4x minus 1 equals 0. And from here we get x squared plus 4x plus 9 and x squared minus 4x plus 7. The product is equal to 0. By setting each of these equal to 0, we get the solutions as before. And x values are going to be 2 plus minus root 3i and x equals negative 2 plus minus root 5i by way of factoring. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.